question is why are the are the ladies not allowed to divorce their husbands in Islam? Sister asked the question that why aren't the ladies allowed to divorce their husband? As far as divorce is concerned, sister, broadly, you can categorize divorce into five categories. One is by mutual consent of the husband and wife both. First category. Second category, unilaterally by the will of the husband. Third category, that if it is mentioned in the Nikah Nama, when a woman is marrying a man, if she mentions the contract, by default, the authority is given to the man in the Quran. Why? I'll come to it later on. But in the Nikah Nama, since marriage is a marital contract, a woman can put down any clause in marriage which is not prohibited in the Quran. She can even say that I do not want my husband to take a second wife because marrying more than one wife is not compulsory in Islam. If the boy agrees, he marries, otherwise they don't marry. She finds a new boy and he finds a new girl. But she can put the clause that I do not want you to take a second wife as long as I am alive. But you cannot put a clause which is against the Quran. You can't put a clause saying I don't want you to offer prayer because offering salah is compulsory. You can put a clause which is optional. Similarly, she can put a clause that I too want to give unilateral divorce. It's called a salah e tawfid or isma, third category. Fourth category is if she does not mention in the clause, but yet she wants divorce, she can request the husband, I don't want to stay with you. She can request the husband to give divorce, that's called as qala. And the fifth category, if the husband does not agree, and if the husband ill treats her, she can go to the qazi, she can go to the judge, and she can take nikah fask. That means nullification of the marriage. If the husband ill treats her, does not give her her rights, she can go to the judge and she can nullify the marriage. So even a woman can take divorce. But under normal circumstances, the man has been given the authority. Why? Because in marriage, the person who's the loser is the man, not the woman. The woman gains. If you heard my talk last week on last Saturday, in the talk, Women's Rights in Islam, subjugated or protected. I mentioned that during marriage, the woman is on the receiving side. The Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 4, that give to the woman in marriage a marital gift, maher. In marriage, it is the husband who gives to the would-be wife an amount, a maher. And maher can be any amount. So imagine, before she's married, it is the duty of the man, duty of the father and the brother. After she's married, it is the duty of the husband and the son to look after lodging, boarding, clothing, all financial aspects. And if divorce takes place, it is the duty of the parents to look after her. If not the parents, it is the duty of the society to look after her. If not the society, it is the duty of the Islamic State to look after her. So she's financially secured. If divorce takes place, the man gives the divorce, he loses the marriage. But the woman, she's on the receiving end. Now, she has a chance to get married. Once she gets married, she gets new mayor. And the man, when he has to marry another woman, he has to give new mayor. If the full authority is given to the woman, the woman keeps on marrying and divorcing, then she will keep on gaining money. Who's the loser? It's the man. The Almighty God even protects the man's status. Otherwise, I have to give a talk on man's rights in Islam. Because if a divorce takes place, Man is more of a loser than a woman, financially and otherwise. Woman gets protection from the family, from the society. So because of that, Allah Almighty God has secured the man. But yet if the woman wants, she can mention the marital contract, she too can give divorce, or she can request divorce from the husband called as kula, or if the husband ill-treats, she can go to a judge and she can nullify the marriage, which is called as nikah fask.